Arcane is a show which had me fully captivated all the way through watching. The thing that the show does better than anywhere else is handling character transformation. Whether it's a fall, a rise, or somewhere in between, the characters in Arcane are so interesting to study. And no character is more interesting than Jinx. From her fall to grace and then auto-destruction of everything she loves, it is so painful to watch and yet so masterfully executed. For that very reason, today we'll be discussing... Now, to talk about Jinx, her life as Powder must, of course, be discussed. Without Powder, Jinx wouldn't be an interesting character. It's like Darth Vader without Anakin. Sure, they are powerful and scary. They had an interesting relationship with the protagonist, but seeing that they could have had a better life and saved countless lives by being good is so tragic to see. Now, during the revolution against the Topsiders of Piltover, the parents of Powder and Vi died, causing Bander to act as their guardian, who would also meet... Uh, Milo and Clagger through that. Now, Powder was the youngest of the group, and a bit of a third wheel to be honest. Everyone loved Powder, but everyone besides Vi thought she wasn't strong enough for their missions, with everything coming together at the raid of Jason's apartment. After being attacked, Powder loses the hall and only remains with few Hextech gems. The mission fails, and Powder is blamed. While in the moment, Powder made the decision to save herself, throwing the treasure in the ocean really was a good thing, and she shouldn't have gotten so much hate from everyone else. With how big the raid became and how much pressure the council put onto the enforcers to catch the conspirators, even if Powder escaped with the treasure, no one would dare trade it because how taboo the raid was and the trouble that could be caused to whoever owns the loot. And of course, the crime caught up with the kids, specifically with Vander. War was coming, and Vi was ready to sacrifice herself, but Vander got in the way. The next thing Powder knows, Vander is captured, and everyone but her is going to rescue a man who is basically her father. At this moment, Vi tells Powder that she's being left behind because she can't lose Powder, which is ironic, because that's what will happen next. Using one of the Hextech gems, Powder has the idea to make a bomb to help everyone, but a bomb destroys everything. Milo, Clagger, and Vander died, and Vi just breaks down. Powder calls Powder a jinx, and she runs away. This episode was a turning point, especially as she becomes adopted by Silco. And the next six years are very important, and a lot of stuff happens which we never see. I'm glad we don't see any of this in between, because it'd be boring to watch the cliche of someone evil is not fully there yet. But Knowing what happened in this time is essential to understand who Jinx is and as a character. Now, the thing which seems to drive Powder is the ghosts of her past. We see that Jinx uses Milo as a devil on his shoulder, a voice in her head. We also hear Jinx say that Eye's voice was also in her head, pushing her to become Jinx. I find that interesting because Jinx fuels her hate from people who she thinks hates her. Milo, the devil on her shoulder, is the one who first called her a jinx, which she embraced as her identity. And if Vi's voice was the one pushing her into becoming jinx, they both mean that in some way she is doing what both Milo and Vi want. How I understand it is that jinx takes the negativity of both Milo and Vi, their worst parts, and the pain which they caused pushed jinx to go cause more pain. What I can't figure out though if Powder becomes Jinx because she thinks it's what Milo and Vi wants her to be, someone strong, or if it's to spite them as someone who stands against the Powder, which they loved, I don't understand which way it goes. We also have the involvement of Silco supposedly as a large part of the formation of Jinx, but she denies that in the last episode. I'll be discussing that idea a lot more in a planned Silco video, but we'll just leave that for a second. If you want me to make that video into reality, this one needs to perform well. So, for that reason, if you could subscribe, it shows that you are enjoying the video and you want more arcane content, subscribing really helps the channel and gets me close to monetization. So if you can, please subscribe, thanks to everyone who has, and now let's get back to video. So now, we are back in the factual backstory from what we see in the show, and it starts with Jinx fighting the firelights and has a breakdown. One of the members is a girl who looks just like Vi, and Powder comes out for a second, something which will soon... C poses an interesting question. When Silco kills Powder in the water and only Jinx is left, we see a much more stable version of Jinx, yet I can't tell if she's more pacified than Jinx or it's only Jinx and Powder. This is an interesting debate, which I hope you continue in the comments, 
But the two sides of it are, Powder wants to help but causes problems, so that, mixed with the destructive personality of Jinx, makes a very unstable and reckless person. But on the other hand, as Jinx is just Jinx fully in control, and knows what she is doing. She chooses to kill us. She has the brains and dedication to achieve whatever twisted plans she may have, like Bomb. It is just a thought I've been having, but I'd love to see your perspective. Either way, though, after Jinx gets half-heartedly reprimanded for failing her mission, she goes on a rogue and full chaos mission. Later that day, she starts a fire, and at the center is a bomb with speaker playing noises of a girl crying. She kills a load of enforcers who just want to save some people's lives, and she does this to cover her real plan of stealing a hextech Gemstone. This single action gets both sides of Piltover ready for war and puts everyone under Silco and shaking grounds with their leader. But the event which throws Jinx off balance is the arrival of Vi. The sister that Jinx thought was dead after betraying her is back and she's with another girl. This event just throws Jinx into disarray and into another rampage. Vi gets taken away, but they soon reunite where Jinx is fighting. Echo, an old friend and love interest, they fight, and standing in complete moral opposition, Jinx is losing and kamikazes Echo. She sets off a bomb which injures him, but just about kills her. Soko brings her back to life with Shimmer, but Jinx is back with vengeance, especially since she thinks Soko is about to sacrifice her. And hence begins Jinx's final gambit. She kidnaps Zoko, Caitlyn, and Vi. She has a sort of dinner with stuffed dolls representing Clagger and Milo. It is a super twisted scene where she tries to get Vi to choose between Jinx and Powder. Which she really wants. Who does she want uh, Powder or Jinx to be? And yet, she is at a point where she can't go back to being Powder. Powder represents innocence and the trouble, yet love, which children bring. When Powder sets off the bomb the, at the beginning of the show, a life she had seemed like an adventure where everything was fun and there's no consequences. She didn't mean to kill, but now she's too sadistic to going back to killing Powder. She designs bombs with screaming children just so she could capture more people for the explosion. She leaves by killing Silco. She did it to save Vi's life, but now she has lost everything. The third father figure she has now lost, all of her family from the explosion before, her sister finally turned her back on her, and now the only thing she can go back to is chaos. Final thing we see Jinx do in the show, at least until season 2 comes out, is launch a bomb at the leaders of the city, undoubtedly starting a full-scale war where she can find comfort in the chaos. Hopefully you enjoyed this video on Arcane. I really hope to make more videos on the show since there's so much to cover, so let me know what you want to see me more in the comments. If you are a fan of Arcane, I'm sure you'll like Invincible as well, because that's also really good animation for adults. If that is the case, you're probably waiting for Season 2B. And if that is so, here is a recent video from the show where I discuss how Season 2 has let us know more of the viciousness of the Vilshamite Empire. Very interesting video where I dive deep into their culture from everything we've seen in the show, but that's it for today. I have been Fictional Fanatics. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in that Invincible video. And until then... Bye.